Good morning, everybody. Uh, good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, thank you very much for joining the second session of the Acute Fluximylitis uh, uh, Symposium uh, that is going to focus today on lectures on critical care management of acute fluximylitis. Uh, thank you all of you for joining us uh, today. Uh, the first session of the virtual symposium was very successful. Uh, we have a great participation of uh, attendees uh, from all around the world, including uh, the United States, Canada, Central America, Latin America, as well as Australia, Europe, and other areas of the world. And the main goal of this meeting is to uh, raise awareness and education on acute fluximylitis that is uh, one of the uh, emerging uh, neurological problems associated with enterovirus uh, infection. Uh, the main purpose of this uh, meeting is to bring uh, people with different uh, areas of expertise, particularly on uh, diagnosis management but also to bring uh, the healthcare providers uh, together with family members to uh, and, and educate about uh, what uh, we can do and how we can improve the management of patients with acute fluximylitis. Uh, my uh, uh, partner and collaborator on the organization here is Dr. Christina Sadowski, who is uh, rehabilitation specialist at the Kennedy Cricket Institute and John Hopkins Hospital. And with Dr. Sadowski and the different groups around the country, we have been able to uh, put together this symposium. Uh, I need to acknowledge today, once again, the effort from uh, the John Hopkins Myelitis and Myelopathy Center, the International Center for Spinal Cord Injury and particularly the acute fluximylitis group, the working group that has been uh, critical for uh, putting together all of these educational effort and all of the participants in the acute fluximylitis group around the United States and Canada have been uh, very helpful in many ways to generate consensus and focus on the better management uh, of patients with acute fluximylitis. And a special acknowledgement for the Bar McLean Fund for Neuroimmunology Research, who has been critical uh, for supporting all of our efforts for patient education, not only for transmyelitis, but also for research on uh, Guillain Barre and myelitis. Our colleagues at the Children National and Washington DC, who are uh, also partners in the organization of this symposium, and particularly to the uh, SRNA, the Siegel Ray Neuroimmunological Association, who has been critical for uh, organization of this symposium. Uh, you already heard from uh, Roberta Pesce. Roberta is part of the SRNA, and she has been in charge of organizing uh, uh, the logistic for this symposium with Andrea, one of our fellows here at Hopkins. And you can see from Roberta's uh, face that she has uh, put a lot of effort and uh, a lot of stress for the organization of this. Thank you, Roberta, and thank you so, to the SRNA for the great support that you provide us uh, for this uh, logistic and symposium. But uh, particularly, uh, uh, I'm particularly grateful with all of our colleagues around the country, the United States and Canada, who has been uh, very helpful in the organization of the acute fluximylitis group and uh, many of you and, uh, uh, are already participating in this symposium and I am very grateful for the support. I will pass the microphone to Christina. Christina uh, is going to explain the logistic. Hey, so hi uh, again. Good morning, good afternoon. Um, you already are familiar for the ones that were here a week ago. We thank you for returning and you're already familiar with the structure. Uh, the symposium that we had last week is already available on SRNA's uh, site. And like Roberta mentioned at the beginning, it's uh, distilled uh, through Roberta's effort in small little pieces that you can listen to and digest at your own 
pace. So please do uh, go and uh, check out whatever is uh, uh, of interest to you. Today, it's mini symposium number two, and it is all about the clinical care in the acute stage. We have an action-packed day. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Carpenter from uh, Children's National talking about the management of acute flaccid myelitis in the ICU. Then Dr. Riggs talking about uh, respiratory issues that are occurring in the acute phase. Uh, Leslie Benson is going to uh, tell us what we know, current state of the art about treatment. I will be doing a little bit of a setup for starting the rehabilitation and then the actual specialist in rehabilitation, uh, Megan Moore and Amy Bayless are going to give you the, the lowdown. And then um, Matt Elric is going to talk about uh, EMG and electrophysiology, which is um, such an interesting, interesting uh, uh, part of AFM. Ben Greenberg at the end is going to put it all together because uh, it's always good to have somebody that looks from, from microscopically and from a, a distance and puts them all together. Him and Dr. Um, Carlos Pablo are doing uh, that day in and day out. Um, I do want to mention that next week, next week, we are going to have such a uh, interactive and, and, and uh, uh, extensive view at pathogenesis, uh, virology, and immunity. Um, all of the uh, speakers for next uh, um, week are going to be uh, there are at the top of, uh, of the field, and they are specifically concentrating on, on uh, enterovirus and uh, acute flaccid myelitis. So, Please join us next week, uh, too. And now, Carlos, right back to you. Thank you, Christina. And uh, it is a great pleasure to introduce today our first speaker, and is Dr. Jessica Carpenter, who is a professor of neurology, pediatric neurology, <clears throat> and the co-director of the Neurocritical Care Program at the Children in Washington, D.C. and George Washington School of Medicine. Following Dr. Carpenter's lecture, we are going to have a lecture by uh, uh, Dr. Rebecca Riggs, who is an intensivist, a prof uh, assistant professor of anesthesiology and critical care medicine at the pediatric uh, 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 hospital at John Hopkins. And, Following uh, this lecture on respiratory issues, we are going to move very uh, uh, to a very important topic of discussion that is going to be uh, 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 discussed by Dr. Leslie Benson, who is at Boston Children's Hospital. And then we are going to have a panel discussion. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to leave the stage uh, area or the stage uh, part of the uh, hopping up and go to the sessions. Uh, and this is uh, already very well explained by Roberta. And that will facilitate the interaction with the panelists and the session for uh, questions and answers. And follow that, following that uh, uh, first panel, we are going to move uh, very quickly. Again, we are going to be back to a stage, uh, the stage area of your app. Uh, we are going to be uh, hearing the uh, lecture from uh, Dr. Sadowski on rehabilitation, as well as uh, uh, our colleagues, uh, Amy uh, Bailis and Megan Moore, on uh, aspects that are important for uh, mobility in the intensive care unit. And uh, I am very glad that uh, 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 Amy and Megan are joining us because they are a very critical part of the uh, 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 critical care unit. So the rehabilitation specialists, the people that are helping us and contributing to the recovery of the patients are critical for this. And we are going to end with uh, Dr. Uh, Matthew Elric, who is uh, uh, assistant professor of uh, uh, neurology and pediatric neurology on topic of neurophysiology of AFM. And we are going to end uh, with uh, Dr. Ben Greenberg, who has an extensive expertise and has been one of the pioneers in studies, clinical studies of uh, myelitis and AFM.